Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. To the board game snobs podcast. This is the podcast that you want to listen to, really, for anything board game related and for things not related. We have a special guest today. We have a star of stage and screen, the great and powerful Ben Maddox. Many know him as the Order of the Five Games for Doomsday podcast and website. Hors d'oeuvre? Hors d'oeuvre, yes. Yeah. Mm. yes. Taste- a tasty little snack, Ben Maddox. <laughs> oh, that made me feel quite nauseous then, that you referred to me in that manner. <laughs> oh my God. I just, snack. I've just eaten dinner and, and just a little bit came up to the back of my throat and it's sort of sitting oh, on my epiglottis now. What time is it there? Just curious. It is 10 minutes past eight in the evening. Oh wow. So you're, I can't add. Seven hours ahead. Seven hours. Okay. I hope the I hope the listeners are into this hot time zone oh, yeah. chat. Welcome <laughs> yeah. to the oh, Welcome yeah. to the time zone podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. People basically call in and say what time it is there. <laughs> I'm in <laughs> Illinois. It's the same time here. Wait, wait, wait. Is it? Prime. Is it really two hours behind? Wow. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Prime Meridian. This is like the uh, Grit- Greenwich Mean. This is the t- isn't it like the where is it like the zero line? The Greenwich Mean time. It's like in some Literally. island out in the ocean. No, no, no. I what is it? you know the hot time zone chat. But what time is it there? It's like one o'clock. In it's one after- o'clock in yeah. the afternoon. And you're drinking whiskey. Am I right? Yeah, rum, rum. Incorrect. Oh, well, rum. excuse me. Excuse five. me that I confused the whiskey and the rum at one o'clock in the oh, afternoon. Oh, 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 me, dear. How dare you? You know how to party down south, <laughs> and I just like I just like to say to your listeners that you know having no front teeth and <laughs> subsisting basically on petty theft is fine. You shouldn't feel ashamed. Oh. You're not I'm cut afraid. adrift. I feel for you. Uh man, I, I'm so uh, so. Why did you why did you stoop to our level and decide to come our podcast? Question number one. Well, I mean, as I said, as I said before, we started recording. I mean, I'm just, I mean, especially Germany has just gone into a second lockdown, and I'm not able to get out and see people, so I'm, I'm starved for company. And frankly, I've exhausted <laughs> literally everyone else on my friends list, and they're all they're all fed up yeah. with me to the back teeth. And and then you bubbled up. To the top of the top of the barrel, and so I thought, why not? I'll I'll scrape it. I thought sounds good. The meth heads, thank you. Good. And uh, I, if if any of your listeners want to send me some meth to Berlin, I would be very very grateful. As you know, <laughs> it, it, it's it's not the meth; it's the weed that's good down here. Oh, really? Supposedly, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. 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 <laughs> Uh, yes, it is the marijuana in this region, which is well known. The meth, not so much. The meth here is 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 what. There's constantly trailers blowing up randomly. Correct, yeah. and there is nothing more disturbing than losing a neighbor. What happened here, uh, Rondell? <laughs> well, my Sudafed blew up. <laughs> Why do you keep going to the chemist? You've had a cold for the last six months. <laughs> I just, I just like the taste of the medicine. <laughs> it's smushed together with some battery acid. It's pretty good. <laughs> well, I've yeah, never taken really meth. Have you? No. I hear one time you're hooked. I don't want to get hooked. Ah, uh, it doesn't seem plausible. If I could to do, me. It, if I could do it one time, not get hooked. Sure. I mean, they said that about heroin, and I only take it. Four or five times a week, so. Oh my! Well, that's good. This is a. We've, we, let me hang on. Say, let me check some things off. Time zones, pharmaceuticals. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were really, you know, let's, let's try not to miss anything. Hot topic. Uh, hot topic. I haven't shopped there in quite in some quite time. Quite some time. And I'd like to point out that although we are present, uh, Gabby and I together, it is because I just now did a COVID test, so I am negative. 
So gobby, though, might be positive, but that's okay. Just don't breathe on me. You're like six feet apart. So. I try to maintain a positive outlook. I bet you It's very difficult. I bet you do. Uh, ben. Yes. We had several things that I wanted to discuss Ooh, with you. Oh, exciting. Just because it was a, just, just to kind of keep the banter going and also keep it somewhat board game related. Gombi's going to sidetrack us here and, and, uh, I've got some good sidetrack material, (laughs) but then I'll loop it back into board game material. Is this a board game thing? Sort of. We try to keep it occasionally board game related. If we don't, uh, you know, the fans get upset. We're not quite as, uh, non board game related as sporadically board. But we do discuss board games, but a lot of banter at the beginning. I just thought it was my job to come on and crudely stereotype people from the southern states of America. Oh, we do that as well. I mean, we are caricatures pretty much, so you're good. Every, and what's sad is everything you've said is true. So, And we want to share that because we're really big with the, with Australians and apparently Botswanans. So we we're... are the number one board gaming podcast in Botswana, just FYI. Incredible. Chris Bray is listening. <laughs> yes, shouting out our two <laughs> Botswana. I don't know how many downloads is required to be number one in Botswana, but we made it, baby! <laughs> it's my goal now to get three downloads in Botswana. <laughs> Screw you! <laughs> Chris Bray downloads five games for Doomsday like several times. Tell your friends. Uh, so, Ben, do you consider yourself, an, in terms of board game media... How do you describe yourself? Are you a reviewer? Are you a uh, what are you? Marketer? Huh? Yeah. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a frustrated, resentful person who constantly puts out content that is roundly ignored by the rest of the world. So oh, so, so I'm angry. You're He's angry is how I describe myself. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the thing is, I used to do like interviews. I thought we were talking to Ben Maddox, not Richard Simpson. No, I mean I'm not as angry as Richard. Sim- I mean I don't get as few oh, okay. da- few downloads as Richard Simpson. So, <laughs> my God, can you imagine? Oh, I mean it's just like sad. it's just like it's 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 the podcast equivalent of walking out with no trousers on or something. It's I mean, can you imagine? Um, <laughs> No, I used to do, like, reviews, but now I can't actually get in a room with other people and play games. I can't do them anymore. So I guess at the moment I'm an interviewer and raconteur, but I'm hoping in the future to go back into reviews. Because what they don't tell you is, you know, if you do reviews, you get free games, and I've got no money. <laughs> How do you approach your reviews? That that was one aspect of your of your website that I always enjoyed was those 10 minutes reviews that you did that was a little more and ins- i don't want to say uh basically what you're asking is what is your process not necessarily the process <laughs> there, there was just more there was so much more insight into the actual game itself and uh, y- without yes. ever showing the game that's an interesting right. take yeah that's unique. very difficult you're, you're on supposed- audio mind you're you're supposed to dump the product out onto the table. Oh, we're, okay. I'm thinking of your YouTube. So we're talking about your podcast. Either one. Yeah. Well, I mean, so if we if we if we want to get serious for a moment, I'm just pouring a beer sure. with me. Um, so when I come to write the review, I guess what I'm looking for is a thesis. What is this central idea to this game? Is it something that is a an exercise in refined simplicity is it overblown is it not hasn't has it not been play tested enough all of these sorts of things right and i i come to this central idea and i refer everything back to this idea and i usually start off the review a friend of mine says oh i listen to your, your reviews but i always fast forward the first minute and a half because i know it's absolutely got nothing to do with the game right? <laughs> so what i Just try using a bunch of big words exactly what i try and do is find an example that sort of highlights this general thesis of what i'm trying to say and then i basically just explain why the game is good or bad basically so you're looking for meaning in things i mean so without wanting to sling mud at other people and Do I, it. I won't Go mention ahead. i won't mention any names <laughs> Rich, Richard Simpson. But no, Richard's very good. No, no, I have a fundamental issue with this whole idea that a game review consists of 
15 minutes of you explaining, badly explaining what's already in the rule book and then saying, it's good because I won and that's the review. I think that's, I mean, it's absolutely redundant. It doesn't take any skill. It doesn't take any kind of analytical power. All it is, is essentially regurgitating what you've read in the rule book. And it's absolutely awful as far as I'm concerned. Yes, and so, I agree. Yeah. So I went I, to... I hate when people start going into the the uh, rules of it. I, well, I don't hate. I mean, there's people that there's a, well, there's tons of mega popular podcasts that do it, but sure. it's like, Much as soon as they start me. going into the, as soon as they start going to the board game rule, the, the, how the game is played, I skip through it. It, the popularity doesn't necessarily equal quality by any means. And I think that was something that we ran into when we started our podcast is that I think our vision of our podcast got derailed at the very beginning because I wanted our podcast to basically be just like everybody else. Right. And we quickly found out that was not what we enjoyed. And it was only when we deviated from that, uh, well, from, from that cookie cutter approach of why do we have to have a board game podcast that just talks about board games? Right. What have you played lately? I th Let's talk about a, our board games. Then a main topic. Then the, the game we're going to discuss, let me discuss what it's about real quick, and then a review. And Gobby had this great idea of, let's not prepare, let's drink while we do it, and we'll just <laughs> see what happens. And that's been going on for quite some time. And, and you know, the magic... And I mean, yeah. the, 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 the format completely <laughs> fell on its ass. It doesn't work at all. <laughs> but the hell, you're drunk, so who cares? We're, doing, uh, we're, ha we're having a good time. <laughs> when you find a toxic <laughs> relationship that's working for you, you just keep doing it. You just keep doing I it. I mean, if I was sober, I couldn't stand Jerry. <laughs> we're the meth of the board game media industry. Once you get a taste, it's hard. You know it's bad for you, but you can't turn back. And yes, it might rot you out internally, but really... It's about the friends that you make, the needles that you share along the way. You know, and what is wrong with a deeply destructive, codependent, alcoholic relationship? It gets a bad rap in the media, and I think that's unfair. That's prejudiced. They never showed that side in Leaving Las Vegas or Do whatever. That's all Dr. Field's and let's not And let's not forget in Leaving Las Vegas... He got to sleep with Elizabeth Shue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's not forget that here. Yeah. There's often those little areas. Jerry, that's my goal. <laughs> well, <laughs> good on you for that one. You just, you, you just keep at it. Just keep at that. I, and uh, so that's check, Martin. Let's see. Misogyny. Um, <laughs> alcoholism. Alcoholism. Uh, let's see who else we can assault. Oh, just while we're on topic. And and of course this this completely keep, you know take us out of the running Ben but who is your favorite board game media person Oh my God Who's number, well, what, who's number what, two what, basically is what we're asking Yeah Who's what, number two What criteria is it favorite as in I like their work Is it favorite as I like their company Their their work well, I, Their work because you can like somebody's work and hate their company I mean I mean versa. for for example um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Uh I, I would say, well, well, go ahead. I should let the guests. You should no, please, please go on. I'm drinking. No. I'm heavily <laughs> drinking at, may I add, a respectable time of the evening. It's not like I'm drinking rum for breakfast. <laughs> we have rum pancakes here. I don't know what mm. you have over there. Now, this is true, though. If you if you go, I went I went on a trip to Bavaria once, a cycling trip with a friend of mine, and we stopped at this cafe. It was like eight thirty in the morning. And he was like, oh, I'll have this Black Forest ice cream thing for breakfast. I'm on holiday. I feel like treating myself. So we ordered it and they went, yeah, yeah, okay. And Christ, they drink in Germany. And, and this thing was vanilla ice cream, cherries, chocolate sauce, and about half a bottle of cherry schnapps. <laughs> At eight thirty in the morning. It was unbelievable. And then we had to ride a bike all day. <laughs> <laughs> to Germany I go. It sounds like the call of your people. Hmm. No, no Gabby, who is your favorite board game media people? And don't say Dan Hughes. Everyone says, hey, he's so bloody popular, it makes me sick. Have you ever met him? Uh, briefly. Not in person. He's deeply malicious and cruel in real life. I can only imagine. I hear the way he treats poor little Mike the Toes Delizio. Exactly. <laughs> Again. <Ugh. laughs> I'm not into feet. <clears throat> uh Oh, um, actually, I have to be, I'll be honest. This is where we're honest, right? 
right. we're drinking rum at one o'clock. Well, sure, let's be it honest. Ensures honesty. I don't listen to board game podcasts anymore. Literally, the only one I listen to is sporadically bored. Um, every now and then, I'll tune into Board Game Barrage because I like to hear when they talk about a game I'm interested in. But I'm game specific these days. If I'm looking for thoughts on a game, I might check out something here or there. But I, quite frankly, don't listen to that many podcasts anymore. But up until here recently, yeah, uh, I like Sporadically Bored because they're have a similar format to us. They copied us. We started first, just FYI. I, I do love like- being invited on a podcast where one of the hosts just basically says, oh, and by the way, I don't listen to your stuff. Your your, your stuff's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why you're oh, here, wait. quite frankly. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. I wasn't done. I wasn't done, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I'll, I'll remove no, the spade uh, so you, okay. you don't continue to dig the hole. Um. Yeah. Uh, and of course, five games for Doomsday. <laughs> good, good. Tick. Uh, no, I will say, uh, well, I told you this when we came on your show last time, the episode with Richard, that's uh, that's about the time I started listening, because I can't remember, I don't remember where I heard it was, five games for Doomsday from. from me. Okay, so Jerry. And uh, yeah, I've been listening I think since. I described Ben as basically, this is me, but sophisticated. Yeah, I and then Jerry I mean, with bigger words and an English accent. Yeah, I mean, you've because never I, met me. It's incredible. I like no one who's ever met me would ever use that word to describe me. I like the way, I like the way you will ask questions, and no matter what they say, you go to your next question. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's a nice way of just moving it along. Moving, moving it along. along. No, I, I really do enjoy your show. I just. Uh, it don't just, listen to it. I, I mean, I understand. I don't you, don't to it. It. you don't it, have it to. You don't have to. out of my brain for that. But I, I, you know, I noticed that we came on basically your secondary episodes of your primary show. That's right. You, know, you didn't ask us the five games that we would take to the islands. Well, I get. The, uh, firstly, it's not an island because the BBC may see the shelter, me. It's a cabin in the woods. The, the <laughs> compound. And, and secondly, cabin you know, in the woods. Secondly, oh, we were on the compound. There's there's a high sophisticated echelon with people who breathe in rarefied air, and then you know there's the my podcast equivalent of a, a meth den, and you know I wanted you to feel at home, gents. That's why I, I invited bet they drink, you on that. Show. Drink bottled water and such, right? Well, so Ben, who is your favorite board game media person besides <laughs> us? Well, besides you. Stick in the fire, too. So, you know, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to Sporadically Bored. I listen to We're Not Wizards. And that's about (laughs) it. I certainly don't. I certainly don't listen to, uh, what were they called? Meth at 12. I don't listen to that one. (laughs) (laughs) Rub it one. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? Because I, so I got into board games through watching the Dice Tower, right? So I watched well, a of lot course. of the That's Dice Tower. Literally everyone. <laughs> right, exactly. And then I stopped watching the Dice Tower because let's be frank, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of thought that goes into a lot of their work, right? But I've started watching the Dice Tower again just because it's familiar and it's comfortable. And I think for all of the criticism, I think Di- Tom Vassell's quite quite in a, in an odd way, quite a charismatic guy. I think you can sit and listen to him for an hour and it's not Dreadful. I think Shut Up and Sit Down are probably the high watermark. I don't watch them, though, because I'm not sure I'm into it. Um, I really like Punchboard Paradise. I think they, they, they sort of do heavy games. And that's, that's about it, really. And, I, and, and again, I'm like sort of needs must. If I'm interested in a game, I'll go and watch a video on it. But I tend to listen to I tend to listen to a lot of football podcasts at the moment. Football, as oh, in you're soccer. a Dallas Cowboys fan, exactly. Joe Montana, he was a, he was he was a football player, wasn't he? Yeah. Somebody, uh, I just uh, I was reading the international news the other day. Somebody in soccer who was very popular died recently. Paolo, well, Diego Maradona died recently. That's who. Uh, so that's imagine. A, that's- Imagine, First. I don't know, what would be the equivalent? Dan Marino. Except more than that, because Maradona no, was the no, single Maradona best. Won. <laughs> Dan Marino won some. Uh, I think they... The Dolphins were I good. I think they won, like, one championship. That's all it takes. They were good in the 80s, Marad- though, the Dolphins, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know Diego Maradona because of my father. Like, we watched the, all the uh, World Cups since I was a child. Right. I'm I'm of Chilean heritage. Oh, really? Yeah. Comma, die. Full, 
Is that Spanish? Is that the right language? I don't know. I don't speak Why did you say? Why did you I don't call know. You? I think, I think it was Australian that you were speaking then. Okay, must die. This is <laughs> this is America. We don't speak nothing but American. We don't know understand no other Englishes. Yeah, well, you know, Dice Tower is like the you know that's the new source for most everyone, right? Uh, and that's what that's how I started. Like I just when I first played Catan, I'm like, what is this game? Yeah, let's go full bore into what are these games? Where do they come from? What else is out there? And Dice Tower is you know the way in and i think they're but, particularly good because they're into light games primarily right so you're not gonna you're not gonna watch an 18xx channel when you're just getting into games right <laughs> correct ben do you have any other hobbies um well at the moment none but um yeah i love footy i watch football i'm a liverpool football club fan and we're very it's good at the footy, moment for the first yeah. time in 30 years which is amazing and uh, footy is a that's a soccer term a yeah. Term. yeah it's short for football like- uh, that's what I assumed. I thought Mike Delisio's ears per- perked up when you said that. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Because we have so a, your f- we have a sport in Europe, which is played primarily using the feet, Mm-mm. which we oh. call football. Cricket. Oh. That's that's our, used our, primarily using the hands. Our football primarily is hands, that's and right. not with a ball, but with an egg shaped object. Exactly. So essentially, between your board gaming and your other aspirations of being a a, a superstar actor, are are you are you currently lined out to be in any other upcoming movies or theater? Well, I was supposed to be in a play in the autumn, but obviously that didn't happen. So that's been pushed back until spring, and that is definitely going to happen in spring. Um, but what I'm really into at the moment is vicariously living through other people. So I watch a lot of bushcraft and outdoor videos on YouTube. And I aspire to go camping in sub-zero temperatures. Because no, that's what I'm about to be doing. Really? I, yes, I, I mean, my, my wife... Not now, I will preference this with making sure everybody understands is that I hate the outdoor. The sun is my enemy. Hmm. Uh, as obvious by my pale skin, but my wife is an avid camper and loves to camp in frigid temperatures and does so very well. And it, it has been a hobby of hers for quite some time. And now, even though we have small children, she's afflicting this hobby on both of us as well as our kids. And the kids in, are now turning to the dark side of enjoying the outdoors, despite how frigid it is. And Yes, we're about to go camping here in mid-December. So You should embrace it. It's a wonderful thing. It's not that cold here yet. It's going to be, though. I mean, this is, in the south, if it's below 50 degrees, we're freezing to death. We can't That's even... True. Yeah, I have no, absolutely no idea what 50 degrees is because... Yo, because y'all go by Celsius. We, we go by the, the proper way of doing it, not this sort of archaic Victorian way you of measuring it. subtract things. by 28 degrees and divide by two. We use the imperial system. Right, exactly. Ariel, Darth Vader. Yeah, they used metric. Darth not, Vader was a metric dude. We're not big on metric. <laughs> so it, in considering the industry as a whole, is there anything about the board game industry that you would want to change, whether it be a change in the media or the change in the actual industry? Or media, as you might say. Well, I don't know. I think it's, um, I think it's the inevitable growing pains of these sorts of things that it's it seems to be incredibly divisive but i think that's in everything because twitter makes people insane right and so and people just shout at each other for no good reason and people assume that if you hold one opinion you hold a complete raft of similar opinions that put you in a particular box and i've I've come to this conclusion now that i kind of don't want unless it's something completely insane I'm pretty, I, I, I don't think I want to judge whether I like someone based upon their political affiliation. I think I want to like someone based upon whether they're a d- or not, right? <laughs> and the thing is, with, and the thing is, you see, Twitter has done so much for board gaming, I think. And I've met loads and loads of people through Twitter, but my God. God, does it turn people into idiots? Like, and and, yes. and this is not this is not a single side of the spectrum thing. I mean, if we get it, if we if we got into politics, I think you could argue that. But certainly, in terms of being being, this is a good English word. You said I, you said you don't swear, but as Americans won't understand this word. People in Botswana may, but as Americans don't. This is fine for me to say. 
Christ, Twitter turns people into bellends. I mean, it really... Berlians. Bellends. That's what they call them. Ber- Berliners. Bellends. 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 People who live in Berlin. Gotcha. <laughs> exactly. Or Belfast. Belfast. I believe, I believe Richard Simpson's a bellend, doesn't he? <laughs> he is a gigantic bellend, yes. Okay. <laughs> But but yeah, so the thing is, and so the one thing I would change is for people to just stop being kids, I think. But but I think that's that's not a specifically board game thing that goes across the board. And also, you know, believe in QAnon, because it's true. <laughs> Sorry? Sorry, is that the podcast we're on? Well, I sometimes yes. get confused. I've got a lot of podcasts. I- I'm kind of like, I think I will consider myself the QAnon of board game podcasts. I say things are untrue constantly. It's, I don't know what y'all are talking about. Oh, yeah, because you're not. Yeah, I, I forget Gabby completely stays out of the sphere of news and anything. Oh, if but you ask I, about I, a hobby, QAnon is my current hobby at the moment. I'm listening to a lot of QAnon podcasts. What are you talking about? I, I contribute a lot to QAnon. Not that I believe it. I just like stirring the pot. That it's is just, so uh, much yeah. fun. God, it's so much fun. Honestly. I mean, unless this is related to the Save by the Bell reboot on NBC Peacock, I don't know what y'all are talking about. Uh, well, essentially, and then the comment on, on Ben's point about Twitter, I think that Twitter has shown to me when I was when I was getting into the back into modern board gaming, so to speak, it really showed that a lot of people a, a lot of people that were playing board games were in, in big city areas and not in like the South, so to speak, where right. I live. It was hard to find anybody. Rural. The rural uh, areas. And the more that I got into board gaming, it found y- 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 it was just hard to find anybody in these rural areas that that enjoyed gaming as a whole. And I think that has changed slowly. Right. And, of course, the more people that you interact, you often run into that that divisive nature where people are very judgmental and Twitter's the place where you go to yell at people, you know? Sure. And I mean, and, and the social media as a whole has been excellent for many industries, but the one thing it hasn't been good for is people really coming to have any type of understanding of one another. They, they, they tend to be no. quickly at each other's throats. If you happen to be a friend or a follow of a follow of a follow of a follow, you get blocked because you it's, follow, 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 isn't follow that- and you didn't even know. You didn't even know what happened. You're God, like, what? that was crazy. That when they were saying, if someone I don't like follows you, then I'm blocking you. I mean, how nuts is that? That's absolutely and the I, craziest yeah, thing I've ever heard insane. in my life. I get on Twitter like once every five weeks and I'm like, oh, I've been blocked. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Right, anybody who follows Richard Simpson. Chain block. You get chain block. <laughs> well, I mean, he is. I mean, I don't think I should say this in public, but he is very, very far to the right. He comes across very nicely in public, but if you ever listen to him in private, it's absolutely incredible. <laughs> Atrocious. He hates the English, anyway, I can tell you that much. But <laughs> I thought he was Something English. about freedom. <laughs> Free? And he always shouts it. Oh, oh. I did. I did with wa- blue painted on his. I face. did watch his secondary podcast where he had half his face painted blue. Yeah. Kept yeah. talking about William Wallace. I didn't understand any. His of good it. friend Bill. <laughs> his good friend Bill. But it- oh, Mel Gibson! Thank you for oh. teaching us all we need to know about Scotland. <laughs> but Richard is a shite. A shite for short ass. Oh, that's that's the best. I- that's the best uh, Sean Connery impression I've ever heard. I must confess. I just recently re- I-, I remembered. I have this habit of any time an actor dies, and I don't care if it's a B-level actor, I don't care who it is, I go out and immediately will watch some film that they're in. It's like a, a tribute to them. Right. And as soon as Sean Connery died, I turn around and hunted down and watched Highlander and realized it had been so long since I watched it, I had completely forgotten it. Is it awful? Fir- it is it's horrifying. <laughs> bad. It's bad. The it's first bad. 10 minutes of it, is some of the worst. It just the editing is awful. There's this scene where he's fighting this this stunt man who's obviously just a stunt man, not an actor, mm. and he goes back flipping to get away from the person because we all know that running away is not as efficient as <laughs> well, well, of course away it isn't. Somebody and just watching that, and then they obviously just paid Sean Connery just to be in it to add some clout to it, and he shows up wearing this. And isn't his last name Ramirez yes, or something? Yeah, yeah. No, but because he's Spanish, but then says that he's Egyptian and he has this accent and he shows up with this. this My name's Ramirez. Yeah, it was just Hello. so awful. 
I'm all the way from Cairo. <laughs> and it was, it was just so shocking to watch. Pharaoh sends his salutations. <laughs> And I do that on every actor that, like, as soon as I see somebody has passed away, and it's just a thing. What did you watch when Robin Williams passed away? I watched that show that I shouldn't have watched where he dies or his wife oh, died. That one. when Dreams May Come oh, or something. Oh, no. Don't watch that. That, that cause It's I, weird. He has all these comedies. Right. Why did I? Not, why not Mrs. Doubtfire it? But for some reason, or at least uh, the uh, Fisher King. What Fisher King? Something. The one with Matt Damon in them that he actually mm. won an Academy Award for. Good Will Hunting. Good hunting. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of which, what do you have a favorite movie that it's, stands well, out? Favorite movie is difficult, isn't it? Because that changes mm -hmm. from not for me day to day. But I think the best movie ever made, certainly the best American movie ever made, is The Godfather Part Two. It does yes. everything that's said on the tin. It's spectacular. The pacing okay. is amazing. The acting is amazing. The the grand tragedy is is brilliant. And yeah, The Godfather Part Two is about as perfect as it gets in a film. I think. Okay. Well, I've seen Part One. I have yet to see Part. Two. Well, it's better than Part One. So watch watch Part Two. And what's your favorite film? If if it's if you're sh shotting. <laughs> uh, mine has been and continues to be Gladiator with Maximus Decimus Meridius. Wow. Why? <laughs> um, I, that movie. Uh, Don't see, they run out of I budget? Hate when, I, hate, I, I hate when people. Huh? Don't they run out of budget? Mm hmm. Huh? So, at the end of the movie, you... he's constantly talking about this oh, they vast out of army I have that will attack the city. And he constantly oh, Ridley, refers Scott, to this vast yeah. army. And then this army never shows up. And I'm just like, Ridley well... Ridley had the aliens ready to come in, but he ran out of money, so he just couldn't finish it. Well, they spent all that money because that one actor died and they had to... <laughs> they, Ollie, yeah. Ollie Reed died, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he died. Ollie Reed died. No, um, okay. Well, I was... Russell Crowe was my mom's favorite actor at the time. She had several, but at the time, she like Mac. She saw L.A. Confidential, fell in love with Russell Crowe. Yeah, he's very good. So, and then uh, I watched that show, and he's remembering his family. There's music in the background sweeping me off my emotions. Uh, you know, he starts off at the top, goes to the bottom, fights his way somewhere to the middle, kills the top, then dies. And it was emotional to me. Like, I can't watch that movie without getting a lump in my throat every time. It might be cancer. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was fine. But Gladiator struck me as never one of those movies that you could say, that anyone would ever say, that's my favorite film. Because it really? was, it's just right down the middle fine, right? It's generic. How it's generic dare, Spartacus. How both of you, it's, how I'm, dare it, you? It, it, I, I enjoyed it, don't get me wrong. But I never viewed it as a... Like a classical film, like like I, my favorite is is Last of the Mohicans, and I, I know that's because it has you know Last Daniel, Mohicans is my top five. Well, it's got Daniel Day Lewis in it, and anything that's got Daniel. Day -Lewis I think I in left it. the cinema halfway through watching that when it was on oh, at the cinema. I, well, it's ben, it's it's ben, ben, ben. I was like it's a thirteen kinda, year old kid though. It's kind oh. of a it's it, it it's very predictable, but still, it's a very good film. It's and anything based on a book. No, of course it's predictable. But no, unless you've read the book. Who's read the book? Magua dies. Shh. That's the bad guy, actually. Yeah. Uh, no idea. And I'm not going to go back and watch it. I'm not going to lie to you. I, have no, I love Daniel Day-Lewis, but I'm not going to go back and watch it. Yeah, Daniel Day-Lewis oh, is good. I used to quote that movie all the time. But I'd highly recommend you go, if you want to see a film that's a modern classic, I would say, that is absolutely, I think, has the greatest... Central. Okay, I'm going to give you two movies. One from last year because it's a great big surprise and it's absolutely fantastic. And this guy is hugely underrated. And that is uncut, uncut gems. My God, Adam Sandler. When he tries, Adam Sandler is astonishing. When he actually gives it a go, he's brilliant, and he is brilliant in that film. The he, last twenty Gobby, minutes. Gobby of looks that very, film. very nonplussed by that statement. The, 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 the last Sandler statement. Minutes, the last twenty minutes of that film. Oh, I mean, you you could just. It, it is such a. Uh, oh, I got, I got some uncut gems. Well, it was. Well, <laughs> I got some uncut gems. <laughs> well, it was. It's, it is. It is kind of shocking when you think of Adam Sandler has phoned it in for a decade now. He's just been getting a paycheck, making these stupid movies, and then one day at some point he just wakes up and goes, "You know, I, I'm going to try today. Time to act, bro. Time's, time to time to." <laughs> 
you know what people need? <laughs> yeah, I did need. Yeah, I need to be depicted in this this thriller. Uh, oh yeah, that was a great film. So that, what was number two. So that is brilliant, and you've got to watch it. It's it's the most uncomfortable watch you'll ever have, but it's so worth it. And then The Master by Paul Thomas Anderson with Wacky. I hear that one a lot. With Wacky Phoenix, Phoenix in the in the lead role. Wacky Phoenix is just if you want to watch a masterclass in perfect acting watch that movie the way he holds on to his anger and never lets it out again this is the sign of really great acting in the godfather 2 al pacino never gets angry you just see it consistently simmer under the surface and the ability to be restrained and subtle and delicate in your art is what it's all about watch those movies brilliant he he was also Commodus in The Gladiator. He was Commodus in Gladiator, yeah. And and better than Russell Crowe, one might venture to say. Have you seen um, Romper Stomper, though? So Romper Stomper no. is a film from the 80s that Russell Crowe played the lead in. And going back to Richard Simpson, uh, Russell Crowe plays a, a, a neo-Nazi in Australia. And it's it's the film that made him famous, basically. And he's, uh-huh. he's, it's young Russell Crowe. It's Russell Crowe in his 20s. And it's uh-huh. absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend it. Romper Stomper. It's an Australian movie. Really good. Check it out. We have Romper Stompers down here, but it means something different, I think. Uh, Is it a sex Go thing? ahead. Go, uh, it may be. I, I'm not into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a eunuch. Uh, will you go ahead and, uh, Gabby, will you keep, uh, you keep fumbling with your. No, with your, I'm just with, checking. You've got, you've got, you've got your. Ben, notebook. I have a question for you. Oh, there yes. it comes. Okay, here we go. Okay, without telling me in the air tonight, do a zero or an O as if you're writing it. So, as if I've got a pen in my hand. As if you have a pen in your hand, do a zero or an O as oh, if you're writing wow. it. Hang on. Okay. I'm just going to write my... Yeah, I go that way. Okay, so you're counterclockwise. That's right. That's because he's in the other equator, I think. That's it. Which one causes it? The toll it flushes the other way. Yeah. I also am counterclockwise. What, what does this denote about your character? You're clockwise. I am clockwise. That is, I was just writing zeros and O's the other day, <laughs> as one does. You've got me, I've, I'm, I've actually got a pad in front of me. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm anti-clockwise. That's right. Okay, anti-clockwise. anti-clockwise. That's, so what, that's what clockwise. that's what we say in the civilized part of the world. Oh. You stand up and protest to clockwise. Exactly. You're anti-screw clockwise. <laughs> You're picketing in the front of the federal <laughs> buildings. If only I could protest and get around to it. <laughs> oh no! Is there a point to this? Were you just, just writing? Curious. Were you just no, writing a I'll love letter and going X O X O, and then no, you realized I was oh. signing it X O X O, and I was wondering, huh? I do mine counterclockwise. I don't. I do mine. How do yeah. people do that? I do it clockwise. Interesting. Oh. Are you left or right-handed though? I'm left-handed because I'm left-handed too. You see, oh, I'm right-handed. Oh, interesting. So it might be a left-handed, be. right-handed thing. It's a left-handed anti. What right-handed ha- pro? You're pro-clockwise. Mm. And interesting Ooh. fact. Every fascist ever existed, <laughs> right-handed. Absolute fact. I don't know what which Speaking hand. Speaking of clocks, which hand do you romper stomper with? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my eyesight is that bad at this that's, point. That's, I wouldn't be able to that's tell up you. To your, that's up to your significant other. Um, did you know, Earl? <laughs> My neighbor Earl, he's my significant oh, other. What are you talking about? The Duke of. I didn't know what you were the talking Duke about. Of? Did you know, speaking of clocks, there's a royal, this is your neck of the woods, mm-hmm. royal horological conservator. Huh? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Just keep going. I don't horological, know Horological, like horoscope. Yeah. Oh, horo. I'm sorry. Clocks, yeah. Royal horo- horological. Is yeah. that a fancy word for t- clocks? Yeah, it's a fancy word for, for of clocks. Yeah. Of clocks. Conservator. Yes. You keep them. This lengthy title is befitting. What well, do you know who this is? I don't know who it is currently. I mean, I, it, was me, it was me currently. previously, but I, I retired. <laughs> so it know. was too stressful. I burnt out. You got I, had, out. I had no idea this lengthy title was befitting for someone who oversees the functioning and maintenance of all the clocks in the royal properties and residences of the queen. There yep. used to be, though. Now, what is it called? 
Royal Horological Conservatory. He used to be the horological. Got impeached from. <laughs> is that what? So there's a person who just keeps track of time. He yes. winds the clocks, I assume. 500 in Buckingham Palace, 379 in Windsor Castle, and 80 in the Palace of Holy Rude House? Ben got Holy fired Rude, that's he was, Scotland, isn't it? Ben got fired, be, impeached, because he was winding them the other way. Exactly, he was doing it left-handed, you see. <laughs> left-handed, and they were like, we won't And the, the point is, you know, since the Reformation, people with le- left-handed people are completely not on. That's That implies Catholicism, and we don't have Catholicism <laughs> in our country. <laughs> You might say that person has a lot of time on their hands. That was. Uh, <laughs> I, I wonder if they have all. <laughs> do you, would you? Would you both object if I just sat here and repeatedly punched myself in my own genitals for the next fifteen minutes? <clears throat> I don't we'll know. have no romper stomping here. <laughs> this is a family-friendly no, no, podcast, no, no. and I tell you what, we are extremely conservative. I wonder if I have a watchdog. <laughs> I, now that oh. should have been a spit take, Ben. I'm sorry. Oh. You should have spewed that out in hilarity. I mean, that's I, maybe that makes me feel slightly more nauseous than the thought of Mike Delicio's toes. To be honest. Uh, oh, oh. oh! Can you imagine that? Hey, no, I try not to. Mm. How can you tell a clock is really hungry? No, it goes back four seconds. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, God, Gabby, Gabby, we don't have time for this. No pun intended. We got to get off the clock, joke. I don't know why you, I why you've got the Lord of Time. If I was the <laughs> Royal Horological <laughs> Conservatory, first thing I would do is change the name to the Lord of All Time. Mm. The, the Royal I'm, Horological. Dear listeners, a uh, future uh, editor, Gabby here, editor in chief. In order to keep the show family friendly, um, many comments. Uh, by Jerry Baker against the royal family and a tirade against um, inexplicably of Meghan Markle. Um, uh, do not, he doesn't. Th- these are not the thoughts and opinions of board game snobs. Uh, and in order to keep this show continually family friendly, as it very much is so, so that we can save the ears of your children, uh, these thoughts were edited out. And and now back to the show. Preposterous. Preposterous. It's two, it's two well, o'clock, and I'm finished on the other <laughs> round. Do you know Sylvester Stallone? <laughs> no, not Sylvester. <laughs> suffer a suck attack. Uh, it's just the fact that there is a royal family that exists. It I think blows, that's stupid. It blows, it blows my mind. Boggling. It's 2020. It's really... It's mind-boggling, especially if you watch all the shows. It's oh. like the procedures and traditions and ceremony it's, all for it's crazy, no? whatever. Before I forget, my wife thanks you entirely, Gabby, for recommending Victoria. <gasps> She's been watching yes. that. Um, but the fact Clara that Oswald, the fact that that exists, and in my mind, that's such a. It's so ignorant. But when I vacationed in London and saw it all, I thought, okay, this is this is why this exists. It's crazy, but at the same time, there's something almost magical about it. It's like you're looking, well, it's like you're, you're in an alien land. It's ingrained in you as a child here, as so, you know, the prince and the princess, and they live happily ever and, after. And then to think that one of our people just went over there and broke that up. Well, I mean, it's wonderful. The, the point is, there's a big <laughs> scandal in Britain at the moment because poor kids in poverty can't get free school meals. Yet it's perfectly fine to spend. 25 million quid on a wedding of a minor royal who's never going to be head of the family. It's absolutely... Don't get me started on the royals. This will this podcast will turn into squids? an anti-royal podcast. Huh? I mean, what? it blows my mind. I mean, it's 2020. How anachronistic is a royal bloody family? It, it's What's absolutely crazy. <laughs> what school? Uh, they're part of the Kraken family. They squids. give right. they give lunches in school. <laughs> yeah, you mean your mom doesn't make peanut butter sandwiches and put it in a brown paper bag and send it to you. No, kids, yeah, kids get kids uh, below a certain sort of income level get free school meals. Mm. Yeah, we have that here as well. Yeah, because it's it's called sort a civilized of. country. I used to I used to get free meals. You look like you used to get free meals. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, dare you. I'm sorry. You have you noticed that as this, <laughs> you notice as this podcast goes on, and the more I drink, the more vicious I become. I have a question for you, Ben. Okay, good. Two, These are good I have, questions. I have two questions. Two questions. 
What is a fear you have in life? Mm. Uh, now, are we talking about serious existential fears like death, yes. or are we talking about pointless phobias? Both. Mm, both. So, I mean, death seems the cliche answer. Yeah, but or, who, who wants to die? The thought of it nobody. freezes you, doesn't it? It's absolutely terrible. No, my, my biggest phobia is rats. I am scared to death of rats. If I see them on the street, I mean, I, I freeze. It's terrible. Absolutely scared to death of them. Well, my cat has become quite proficient in killing rats. He it's a good a thing. one up nearly every day. Since I'm two glasses in, I can admit a fear that which few people know that I have. My wife knows it very clearly because <clears throat> I did not reveal this until after we got married. And it's very hypocritical, not hypocritical, but it's very odd that I would have this fear living where I do. Um, I am meth. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't fear that dragon. Uh, I, uh, you embrace it. Ride the white snake. There is. Uh, I am terrified of tornadoes and i live in tornado alley i live in an area and y'all don't have tornadoes in, in germany i'm assuming well I mean, it's but, one of those um, things i mean i could be scared of tornadoes but that's a well, bit like being scared of unicorns isn't it correct but here this is the one place on earth where they happen quite frequently over a short period of time and everybody here is so used to them and has had either their property damaged or somebody they know gets sucked up by one that it's not really a fear anymore it's just something that you record and you post on youtube but i have this incredible dread that every time a tornado season occurs i begin watching the weather and the news religiously i cannot go to sleep if there is a tornad warning that might you know the rating's really high tornad warning yeah the tornad is the scale that they use now oh. that they gauge what the the, the severity of a tornado that might occur in the area. Anyways, I have an intense fear of tornadoes. I I have said this on our podcast previously. I too fear tornadoes, but at night. No, I'm not worried about. I don't want to drive tornadoes. into a. It's already dark outside. I can't see, and I fear driving right into the mouth of a tornado. That seems such That's an not, odd fear because I don't you, come. I mean, I don't come from a place where there's tornadoes, right? So. It's like I'm, if it's raining and storming here, especially in fall or spring, there's a good chance there's tornadoes and they always seem to come at night where we're at. And at night, you don't know if the wind's just blowing really hard or you're driving into a tornado. That's my fear. And so in rural Oklahoma, because there's been so many, the town that I live in back in 1945, actually, was completely wiped off. You look, the map you look, you look so Good. I mean, you you were living there in 1945. Uh, no, uh, it's a uh, moisturized, heavy moisturized. But in 1945, the entire town He's a quantum leaper. The yeah. entire town was wiped out, and 110 people were killed. And so it's like there's all these little towns in rural Oklahoma that have had tornadoes blow through and have completely killed everybody. That now all these little rural towns have tornado sirens. And so anytime that there it's is... It's a mermaid singing off in the distance. Mm. Yes, pretty much. Tornado. You're all gonna die. <laughs> and you can't resist. It's no rock wonder me like, somebody it, died. It's <laughs> rocked me like a hurricane. I can't believe you missed that. Um, but when it when it happens, they sound, they sound these they sang, sirens. They sang the you sirens. Got me, you've got me going. Rock me like uh, a hurricane. Oh, my God. What am I going to do? <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and you just you, it, there's nothing quite like waking up in the middle of the night to have this purge like sound siren going off and knowing that you have to get to your underground cellar or bunker or safe room to keep yourself from being blown away and most Oklahomans do not have that fear that's like something they're so common it, that they just it's 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 something that they just live with they don't even think about it it's it's a minor irritation but for me, I panic to a degree. A that minor is, irritation is a black lung. Well, a minor irritation <laughs> to me is, is, is a rat or, or, you know, or something of that nature, something that doesn't strike me that's going to kill me. But I have this intense fear of tornadoes and coming from an Oklahoma. And that's like, I would fear a tornado if I was intense. That's like being Texas from Tex, being a Texan and being afraid of horses, being an Oklahoma and being afraid of tornadoes is like. Yeah, I can't believe I said this. You're going to have to edit this all out. I'll lose no, all. No, your I'll, fear lives. Nobody at the Texaco will ever speak to me again. <laughs> the VFW, I'll be banned. So existential fear, what do you have? Death. <sighs> Is it death for everyone? I won't tell you mine. I'll give you time yeah, to think. I, 
Hang on, could we just pause for a second? Because I've just got through that yeah. beer. I'm going to go and get another beer. Yeah, <laughs> I also could pee, so we're good. Just okay. keep recording. I will. I'll just keep talking. <laughs> I'll just keep... <laughs> another thing. We come in, Jerry's crying. Just go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So and another thing I fear. So, so Cobby's gone to urinate. Ben's gone to get another beer. I wonder what kind of beer Ben drinks. I need to ask him that. I like that uh, Viner stuff. Viner Stoffen? That's the type that I like. I really like that type of beer. But as for dread, there's very few things I actually dread. Not existentially. Not death. So I'm going to be singing I've, Rock You Like a Hurricane now for the next three days. I've almost died several times that I think that because of that, I've never really been... I don't view death as... I don't know. I don't. I. I, I think that is. I. When you said that, of course, that threw me off. I don't know why. I never thought. Well, of what do you? What being. do you mean? You've almost died several times. Uh. Well. It, it, I. I used to be and still am to a degree a firefighter. Oh. Uh, okay. But in the past, I've had you know been involved in either a car wreck or been in situations where most people, where the chances of dying is is relatively high, and I have I have been next to people who have died. In situations, in, in, in situations like that, and so the thought of dying, of course, it's there. I'm not saying I'm not afraid to die. Obviously, that's insane, but I, it's never been something that has preoccupied my mind. Well, it's a funny one, isn't it? I mean, I find the older I get, the more it tends to preoccupy my mind, right? Mm -hmm. Because because when you're young, death is truly an abstract. Mm -hmm. When you get older, it it's it becomes a reality. Right, uh, right. I remember my father discussing this way when I was very young, and it was. It, I remember him talking about how, and and to put it as as he would say, it, the city folk, which is basically anybody who lives in a town with more than five thousand people, <laughs> right? Uh, they don't they don't experience death like people in rural areas. They sure. don't see animals. They're not they're not they're not butchering sheep or cows. They don't they don't witness death as normally as most people do. And nor are they have, you know, most people who live in rural counties have have whether it be through some sort of uh of either illness or or military duty, they they have seen and experienced death in their family. And they don't view it as the same as it, it's almost like a cultural thing to, to a degree. Right. They they have a different viewpoint of death, and it's like it's almost as if it's expected. Like you 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 just do not. I don't want to say you don't fear it. You just don't have that dread, that existential dread that most people have with it. And it's not a measure of being cowardly. Cowardly. It's just the measure of just familiarity. The, well, there's a wonderful poem called Obard by Philip Larkin. And it's about this. It's it's about the dread of death. And he puts it absolutely beautifully that it's not this it's not this constant preoccupation. It is just this he how does he put it? When he's caught without friends or drink, it comes to the front of his head, right? And and it, it's that kind of thing, the older you get, the more it starts to knock on your door and the more you start to think about it. And some people are quite sanguine and some people completely dread it, right? Well, I'm having, okay, go back to my mom. This is the first person I ever actually watched die. Right. Saw her take her last breath. And I mean, I think for the, for the person that's dying, I mean, they're dying, whereas it's the survivors, you know, that's that's who you feel sorry for, because they're the ones that have to deal with the trauma that just occurred. Yeah. And I, I, I've, I realize that now because like mom, she got to the point of her illness. She was like, I, literally, I, at, you know, we asked her, me and my brother, she's like, how, you know, how you feeling? Da, 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 you know, as a daily chat and towards the last two or three weeks, there is like, it's inevitable. And she told us, I'm ready to die. Right. So once you get to a certain age or a point in your illness, I think you 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 accept that. You're ready for the peace that you assume is coming. I know there's many beliefs out there, but uh, 
death could be peace or something that's going to, you know, I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of being old. I'm tired of the situation I'm in and death can be a relief. Whereas the survivors that just saw everything transpire that missed the person that is now gone, like they're the ones that suffer. Uh, you know, of course, not talking about people that suffer through an illness to that point, but you, you get what I'm saying. Well, until you get to that state of mind, it's completely inconceivable, right? Right. This is the you point. Think you're going to live forever, especially teenagers. Sure, sure. So you were saying, anyway, you were saying about you were going to give me time to think and you were going to open up about your existential dread. Well, that, that well, we kind of went into it already, but like I... My thing is I dread not me dying. I dread other people dying. I dread, well, I dread me dying for my wife, uh, my goddaughter. I dread, like, before my mother passed away, even as a younger person, I thought about what's it going to be like when my parents die? Hmm. What's it going to be like now? I think about now that my mother's gone. My father's in very good health. But still, you never know. They're, they tend to be the ones that just like drop dead suddenly, you know, or just don't wake up for some random reason. He said that's what happened to his father. We just had this conversation the other day. But I think my my father-in-law is 85 years old. And so I'm always trying to prepare my wife. She has both her parents. And I lost even my grandparents at a very young age. I only had a grandmother when I was growing up. The rest were all gone. And I tell her, I'm like, you know, there's nothing that can prepare you for it. But do you think about like the fact that someday you're going to get that phone call and your dad didn't wake up this morning? Like I, I think about these things all the time. And this is what's different. This is what's, I, why I ask you this because I ask, I asked Gina and her whole family is this way. They're just very positive. I said, do you think about that phone call? Because I think about it nearly every day. I thought about it with my parents. Now I'm thinking about your parents. She says, no. She just doesn't think about it. And I'm like, that would be great. I wish I could think like you that. You need some math. <laughs> exactly. I need some the thing math. Is, the thing is, I'm, I've always been a bit of a goth and I'm a bit morbid, you know. And my mum brought me up, right? And so that thought was an ever-present since I was a kid. I remember once waking up. I must have been seven or eight and I dreamt she died. And you know, I was, I was completely, I was completely beside myself. And, and so, you know, and, and so I kind of prepared for it and I kind of thought about it a lot. And when she did the, die. The, the crystal ring on your finger kind of gave away, or the skull ring on your mm, finger. Yeah. You got a little bit of goth going on there. But only a bit. It's only the ring. I, I'm, I'm goth curious. <laughs> Just I don't show. go for the, I don't go for the full makeup and things. But you know, when she, when she eventually did die, I don't think any of that preparation helped one bit. I was no. completely devastated, you know. So so what, when I think about your wife, the fact that she doesn't think about it, I think is a blessing. No? It, it, you are... Uh, ben, see, this is why people should listen mm. to your show. You're smart. It's just like that... Oh, and I'm that way. Jerry knows this. I worry about the stupidest crap that I can do nothing about. Why worry about it? It's not going to change not a, a thing. thing. Stressing about my mother dying did not change how much I mourned her death. Right. And it won't change it for anything else. Stressing about anything in life. It's like I come up with all these scenarios. 99% of them never happen. But in my brain, all these scenarios pop up in my thoughts and i'm like oh what about this what about that that's why you need meth. <laughs> this, like, meth yes this yes this this podcast brought to you by pfizer <laughs> and doing grand Take work all the pain away yeah have they done have they uh they've started rolling out the vaccine in, in, i'm somewhat in Britain, jealous not in germany though i don't think i just assumed germany would be you would have thought game. wouldn't you but no i think i think britain are far more willing to treat their citizens as guinea pigs than germany are you see <laughs> if, if 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 Richard Simpson starts growing hair, I don't think I'm taking that vaccine. I'm, that's how I'm going to gauge it. If Dan Hughes suddenly starts becoming very loving, it's like you know, like the next podcast. He's like uh, he's really thin and discussing his love of the and he's re he's really I super generous gonna... and he's just spending money super willy generous. nilly on yes, random yes. people. Yes, yes. Yeah, suggesting other people's Patreon. I think I'm just going to skip that. Uh, I think I'm going to skip that. Yeah, vaccine. but the point so, you, you're asking about existential dread, and the thing is, I don't think existential dread is a bad thing 
Because basically, existential dread has been the creator of all the great things humanity have done, right? And I think it all boils down to a fear of death. And it all boils down to, I've got to put a stamp on something before I stop existing. And so this is why people write. This is why they create music. This is why people want to discover scientific things. It's because they want to do something before they can no longer do anything. Right. And so I think it's healthy. That's why we're leaving this legacy of yep. this podcast. Yeah, this, po this podcast is your legacy. I intend to take <laughs> as many people with me as possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awkwardly funny. Let me take a second. Let me check that off. Let me check that off my list. Terroristic threats. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, so along the existential plane, let me ask you this final question, uh, and then we can go back to fart jugs. Do you consider yourself happy? Wow. Why do you, boy, you just brag. Um, absolutely down. not. No. I, I, I never have, though. That's the thing. So the thing is, I think all emotional states are, tran uh, are, um, are transient. And I think, I think the big problem. So if we want to get very serious for a minute, I think, I think a reason people kill themselves is because. They are tyrannized by the present moment. They assume the present will always be like it is in perpetuity, when we know for a fact that that's not the case. But it's the way we are as animals. The present moment has such an effect on us, we can't conceive of it being different in the future. So am I happy? I mean, right now, I'm cool. Yeah. And I find the older I get, the calmer I am. And the less angry I am, there's less testosterone, right? I mean, there's less erections too, but you know, it's swings and roundabouts, isn't it? And so am I happy? No, but am I absolutely destroyed and ruined and unable to function? No, either. And I think most people are the same. And I think, I think there's a real, it's, it's really interesting because growing up as a kid, we never had access to American media really. There was a few sort of sitcoms and Saturday afternoons were the A-Team and Airwolf, but pretty much everything else was, um, everything else was pretty much British, British media. And I grew up in a media that was fine with being miserable. It was fine with having TV shows where people were miserable because people are miserable. God, I can't imagine being an American. The, the pressure to be constantly smiling and upbeat and positive and completely dishonest about how crappy your day is being. <laughs> My God, how you people don't collapse at the age of 55 with a coronary through the stress of being constantly forced to be happy nonstop. I don't understand. So... No, but I'm I'm cool with it because being unhappy is far more interesting than being a grinning moron, right? <laughs> Throughout your whole tirade, I was thinking, wasn't the guy in Airwolf's name Sinjin? I think it was, yeah. <laughs> what was who's the actor? Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> no, he was I, I, Yeah. Jan I, Michael I Vincent, wasn't it? Something yeah. Yeah, yes. yes. Yeah, you pulled that right out there. Yeah, I yes. certainly did. Yeah, uh I agree. Um my <laughs> This is one of those things that's like, I look at my life from an outside perspective. I have an incredible marriage. I have great friends. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are certain caveats to, to everything. Yes, but yes. yes. Uh, you know, I've always struggled in the job department, but career is not something important to me, as can clearly be seen by my resume. <laughs> Your CV. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a personal shopper at Walmart. Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife is like, you know, she, uh, you know, hey, I should be on medicine. I'm pretty sure, but I don't, I refuse to go to the doctors. But uh, I should be happy. I should be content. But like I said, in my brain, I'm always considering the worst possible outcomes of everything that comes my way. So, right realistically i'm usually not content and then alcohol comes in the picture and i get a little more content but that's just temporary also stay off drugs kids the thing is with alcohol <laughs> there's no reason that it should be temporary Absolutely you're just not, not trying hard enough this is my thing i tell my gina she's my wife my, my wife, wife. Yeah, my wife <laughs> <laughs> bringing it back <laughs> uh why don't they just dole out happy drugs to everybody all the time? And let me be happy. 
Get me on some Vicodin, and I would be happy all the time. I, you can go to Earl right next door if his <laughs> you see, trailer's still you see, up. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. American culture feeds you this lie that you need to be happy all the time. Whereas Europe, in Europe, we, we know that we're all going to die someday horribly, and we've accepted it. So we're miserable. And, in a and cold, what you don't, moist castle somewhere. Moist. Exactly. Being miserable is great. Just someone going, oh, how are you doing? Uh, having to just go, yeah, I'm great. What about you? Have you heard about my website? I mean, my God, how do you people live? I don't, I don't get it. I Check blame, out my Instagram. I blame I mean, Chick Fil A. To, <laughs> right. Why? I mean, to be fair, I have a podcast that I'm constantly pushing, so I'm not really one to talk. But still, <laughs> yeah, yeah, based on Doomsday, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's going to be some pessimism in it. Oh, uh, yeah. You should probably get on meds. I've, but when are me? we going to start talking no. about QAnon? Because uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> Tell I me don't about save, save our children. Save our children. I don't, oh, yes. See, y'all are referencing things I do, do not, not understand. That's no, because you're not woke enough. You've not realized <laughs> exactly. that, that you haven't being experienced controlled. the Great Awakening. <laughs> where we go, Williams, where maybe. we go, one we go all. <laughs> that's a great. We should put that on a T-shirt. That's our new. <laughs> that's our new theme. Where we go, one we go all. Um, I had written down that you. Uh, I watched. I can't remember what the it was two years ago, three years ago. You had a previous podcast with oh, I did, yeah, Petty the Third, Tom Petty, Tom Petty. Hmm. You had a previous podcast. I did, yeah. That that ended ended horrifically, yeah. Oh, okay. Rip that scab off. Should we should we not go into it? Well, I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm coming from my point of view. So basically, I woke up. It was the 21st of December. It's not It's not seared onto my brain or anything. And I had some friends from England staying over. They'd come over for Christmas. And uh, I was in bed. And I, I, I heard a little timid knock on my bedroom door. And I, I woke up, yeah. And they said, Ben. And I said, yeah. And I said, have you looked at the podcast website today? And I went, no. And they went, I think you should. So I, I got out of bed, bleary-eyed, I turned on my computer and I looked at the website and basically my podcast partner <laughs> had written a 1,500-word diatribe about how basically I was a Nazi and a misogynist. Mm-hmm. And oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I, 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 tr- I did not know any of this. And he'd, he'd locked me out of the Twitter accounts and the email accounts and the Patreon account overnight and yeah, wow. he he just went out and and told the world that I was this big evil douchebag. And frankly, I mean, the stuff he was saying, I just don't have the energy for. You know, I mean, God, I'd like to be that bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's um, and yeah, I long story. Not, I just saw like there was a, it was like a, he, he looked like Jay Leno, but he was interviewing you. You know, like that. He had a very good production value. I forget the name of the show. But he had you on. He had like a seat and a chair and a desk. That's like, production oh, value yes. here in the Chris, South. Chris, yeah. Chris Whitpam, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget the name of the show. Yeah, but Game All Night it was called. That was it. Yes, that was it. So I just watched like the first five minutes and you're referencing. So I did not know any of this. So if you want any of this yeah. cut out, that's fine. No, 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 it's fine. I mean, basically, okay. basically, you know, this the guy I did the podcast with, I think... There's lots of different. There's lots of reasons, and and part of the reason it's undeniable that I'm I'm really quite an objectionable human being who's very difficult to work with, and I, I'm not going to deny that. But you know, um, I think he felt that I was taking the main editorial decisions for the podcast, and frankly, because he was talentless and stupid. I was. <laughs> I've had a couple of beers. I apologize. I, you yes. hearing this, Jerry? I find myself in the same situation. <laughs> but fortunately, Gabby has predicated this podcast on knowing that I am a douchebag. And so that none of this is, is something that we should Jerry do. Jerry is a real life jerk. I am. But and, I and love I, him nonetheless. Well, it's because I have worked on not being so jerkish. And I, is that a word? Why? Embrace your real character. It's fine. No, it's it's not so much my character. It's just the fact that I don't... Don't. A dude. A dude. Oh, a dude. Canadian all of a sudden. <laughs> Hello, Rodney. Uh, <laughs> that um, I don't want to be that like that. And I think it's mainly because I 
value relationships and well, certain relationships, not all. And it's harder to maintain those relationships when you yourself have these issues. And so I absolutely, have, I have absolutely. done a lot of. Well, I say I've done a lot of. I'm about to brag on myself. I think I've done a lot of personal growth. <laughs> I, think I, I think I've gotten better. Is what I'm saying, Gabby? Would you agree? Please um, agree. Yes. Or I will castrate you. <laughs> I mean, when you say podcast. when you say better, what were your previous faults? Oh my! Extreme douchiness. Uh, what, 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 how does douchiness manifest itself? No. It, it uh, manifests Jerry- itself by being a highly opinionated. Not, I don't want to say arrogant, but yes, I'll say arrogant. I was unable to change my way of thinking to view anybody else's. You were not easily appeased. No, nor was I appeased about anything. I was, so, I was never satisfied, always right, and and could not empathize look, with I'm another. I'm dying human to being. chime in on your uh, faults, please, <laughs> uh, Jerry. Hey, I and I don't, I don't. Maybe it's you meeting me. Because I'm very vocal, uh, and we make this is a thing, and we've said it before. I'm the emotional one. A wuss. Hmm? Jerry's the logical one. Spock. <laughs> See, so I'm the one that feels things. I I'm socially aware. I know things we should say, shouldn't say. Don't hurt people's feelings. And Jerry has never cared cared about that. Probably previously to us being together. I mean, you knew you should because you are married and you manage. I don't know how you manage that, but you managed to get married uh, to a very pleasant wife. She's she enjoys your company. Again, what do you do? Who knows? Everybody knows. <laughs> the listeners know. So I think he's implying sexual prowess, but I don't believe it. Uh, uh, quite honestly, you know, you know, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> I mean, this is this is this is a this is a man who's scared of the wind. I mean, I, I hardly think he's going to be particularly good in the sun. Okay, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, when Jerry first started coming, we would we used to fight, and we still do. We would fight on a fairly regular basis, and Jerry would say things that were outright hurtful to me, but they were true. Yes. <laughs> Because <laughs> that doesn't make uh, them any less hurtful. Though. Exactly, exactly. But Jerry, uh, as uh, you may or may not know, he is on the spectrum, as he likes to say. Uh, he has been diagnosed, so he doesn't have the filter that most people have. Right. So, with our friendship and podcast and gaming together, I'm like Jerry. You just can't say that stuff. You can't just go up to a group of people, even if they're your friends. And say, blah, blah, blah. It's going to hurt feelings. You're going to lose friends. I repeat myself on a regular basis with this. And I think maybe some of it gets through. I still am with him. We're still doing this podcast. I still love him. He still loves me, whether he says it or not. Mm -hmm. He does say it in text. Uh, Snapchat mostly. Just emojis. Yeah, it really goes. Not. It goes away in eight hours. Yeah, it goes yeah. away. You Nobody do not knows. want that to be on the. There's no record. No. It's, it's just on the servers at Snapchat.com somewhere. Ex- exactly. That that must be that must be a server farm, just <laughs> full of cockpits. It just must be spilling out into the desert. Some server farm somewhere in the desert, just cockpits falling a out into the city sun. Dedicated to them, I'm sure. You not seen my Richard farm. Veal. I have some of the finest cocks in all of southeastern Oklahoma. Whether they be red, uh, fighting, Rhode Island reds, the fighting cocks, Dominic, Manny Roosters, all of them. Manny Roosters, exactly <laughs> the best. Of so yeah, I, I Jerry has progressed some. He still every now and then fires off shots. I'm like Jerry, and I will yell at him in an emotional state, and I'm like, you shouldn't say that. That hurt my feelings, and he's like, what? It's true. I'm like, yeah, well, you should st- still shouldn't say it. Blah blah blah. What Gubby's getting at is that. This experiment and this emotional <laughs> and mental, uh, yeah, this personal growth that I've experienced over the past several years has been facilitated by our relationship. And it's strange because it was not my intention for that to occur seemingly live on a podcast. <laughs> right. But it has because at the same time we started this podcast was about the same time that I was going down this road of – Really trying to not be a jerk. Yes, because because 
by definition, autism is an egocentric way of looking at things. You you have it's a it's a it's a difficulty with developing relationships and really not even seeing the need for certain relationships or understanding the need to develop them in a way that is beneficial for both parties. It's very parasitic sometimes. And it was hard to come to that grasp and to have these conversations and these realizations that I am hurting people, especially people that I particularly enjoy their company with. And how do I prevent that? And how do I develop? And how do I get to the point to where I can say things that aren't hurtful? I can say things in a tactful way or even the even being able to withhold certain thoughts and feelings if if the, and it was it was a difficult thing and unfortunately it happened over a long period of time and Gobby got the brunt end of it because at at the time he was my closest person the, the, the next to my wife the closest person outside my family hmm. no i think it's i think you know i found it when i was younger very difficult to just keep my bloody mouth shut on things that didn't concern me and also you know Knowing which hill you want to die on. You know, I have a friend, and he's a very close friend of mine, but he'll sometimes get into an argument with something, uh, with me on something. Completely inconsequential. And I'm just like, you really want to die on this hill? You know, you want to say, oh, have you seen Ben recently? No, we don't talk anymore. Oh, why? Because I, I wouldn't agree on the difference between magenta and cyan. You don't want to die on that hill. There are lots of hills worth dying on. I screw your wife, then, you know, don't speak to me anymore. But my <laughs> God. And so it really, it really is. It, 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 it's finding, and I, I think this is something that comes through age, right? It really is this thing of you don't have to, when someone says something and you think it's absolute bollocks, you don't have to tell them. Not every time. And that's something that comes through age. And, you know, if we, if, you know, this is ostensibly a board gaming show. One thing I've noticed about the board gaming community is, my God, it's full of pedants. Right. And nothing drives me crazier than just rank pedantry, endless pedantry. Hold on while I Google pedantry. <laughs> that's like that's like uh, people being all particular about little bitty things like rules excessive and like, concern with minor details yes, and rules yes. got you and so, got exactly. you exactly so it's the same thing of like when and it, that irritates me very much so when we're playing if you want to see that in true form just go on bgg <laughs> and ask is this game broken or this is not a game right. or, or there's always some i, I it shocks me how some games get such a pass because they are quote unquote fun and nobody looks at them and go, well, these are, these are, uh, they're very random. It's just, they're just a fun game. You don't, it, they're not meant to be this highly calculated, intricate machine. And yet some games people will pick apart and say, oh, if you do this and this, your, your chances of winning are increased by a certain percentile and, and just really lose the fact that sometimes you can play, I can play a game that I feel like is not broken, but it, it's not balanced. It's not exactly even, and I can have fun playing it. I don't need to feel like because I've won the game that I thus enjoyed the game. I can enjoy losing a game. I, I, I DM, I, I DM D and D. Well, I did in the before times, and. I'm very much, when I play D&D, it's very much an excuse to get drunk and do silly voices, right? And I'm pretty good at, I'm pretty good at silly voices and I'm absolutely fantastic at getting drunk. And so I don't really know the rules and stuff. And I had a couple of friends, a couple of gamer friends who I played a lot of board games with and they joined in a and d session. And we, we played, we played the game. And then for two days afterwards, I was getting 20 emails off them a day saying, oh, I've chosen this particular sword for my dwarf and I'm going to sync it with it. And it was like 20 emails a day. And I just went, guys, sorry, can you not come anymore? Because this just isn't my bag. Let's let's play Hands of Teutonica. That's fine. But I, you know, and I, I think board games are interesting because they do attract that kind of obsessive, meticulous mindset and i remember once i was i was we i we had board game weekends and i'm I'm very much unlike my sort of board game group and i never grew up with those sort of people and doing that sort of thing and someone turned around to me once and said ben why the hell are you here you're not like us 
And I was like, well, yeah, but I, I really enjoy the games. I'm just not into the incredible pedantry and sort of picking apart every minor thing. You know, I'm a lot more chill than a lot of board gamers that I find are. The minutia, mm. you might say. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Excuse me while I quickly Google meth. <laughs> Uh, that, that'll, that'll get you on a watch list. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start buying kitty litter. Okay. Well, I have a game. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> you yeah. sound excited. I have a game, and it's board game antonyms. Okay. They have those down there, don't they? <laughs> so uh, Antonyms? Antonyms. Yeah, They're we have antonyms. Things. They're different things here. They protest nims. Well, and to him. <laughs> <laughs> Much like The Secret of Nim. You ever watch that? I haven't seen The Secret of Nim, no. The Is Secret it awful? of Nim about rats. It's a cartoon from the 80s. He wouldn't have seen it. It's about rats. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not oh, big on rats. Oh, yeah. right. I watched oh. I watched, uh, I watched Ratatouille and it disgusted me. It disgusted <laughs> me from minute one to the last minute. There's a movie with the guy that was, uh, uh, oh my God. Oh, Michael Marty McFly's dad. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Wil- is it Wilbur? Yeah, it's something I, like that, isn't it's, it? Yes, that's a scary and it's show. it's a rat movie. Where and he, like, I haven't seen it. A rat. He befriends the rats oh, and then he can send the rats out to, so do their, to do his bidding. Yes. It's very and much I haven't like seen that. On. I haven't seen that Michael Jackson movie either, where he becomes best friends with a rat. Mm. I'm, I'm not familiar with that. That's one. where the song Ben comes from. Oh, Ben. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of Ben. Okay, but this is about board game antonyms. So I'm going to list to you. Yeah. It's a game that you pro- I tried to pick popular ones and ones that we're familiar with. <laughs> I'm going to describe it in its antonym form. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be terrible at this. So. And you will ring in with your name, say Ben and or Jerry. Okay. So as 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 an example, some we've used in the past, a famine for Frigg. Which is a feast for Odin, right? Very good, very good. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> exactly. Uh <laughs> Have to use Let's see. Well, Frigg, Frigg, is, Frigg is my favorite heathen goddess, though. <laughs> of course. This one is Queen is Alive. Ben. This, okay. The king is dead. Okay. So you so you get the gist of it. Those are some softballs to you. Not softballs to you, but softball. Like, okay. That's a I know what you mean. Phrase. Okay. <laughs> they don't have softballs over there. <laughs> softballs. That's all Absolutely not. They're German. Oh. They're, they're, they're <laughs> cast in iron. Cast an iron. We okay, do not Jerry, have soft so- boys. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry's about three glasses in. I'm sure he's going to do great that at will this. Tear it up. Do you have to drive home, Jerry? By the way, I, I generally sleep on the gaming table. <laughs> oh, fair <laughs> enough. But by, by uh, due to my Irish descent, here in about a couple hours, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Okay, the first one. The first one is. Shacks of turquoise. Jerry. Jerry? No, I didn't. Quacks of Quiddlingburg? No, I'm sorry, I rhymed. I'm sorry. I am three glasses in. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Wow. Sorry. So it's Shacks of Turquoise. Shacks of Turquoise. And I've taken some liberties with Shacks antonyms. of Turquoise. Ben. Red, ben. The red Cathedrals. Very close. Jerry, Very close. Jerry. Jerry. The Castles of Burgundy. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, there we oh, go. Yes. Oh. Jerry, one. Ben, zero. Silver up, Jerry. I lost last time to Richard Simpson. <laughs> that's that's nightmarish. That's not, I don't know how that happens. He just and I bet he was distracted. I bet he was distracted looking at the Stormfront website for most of the time. <laughs> I'm trying this to get this. I'm trying to get this myth started that Richard Simpson is <laughs> a Nazi. I think it's. A, I think it's a myth worth worth starting. Okay, one point, Jerry. Zero points, Ben. The next. Yeah, one. Let's not. Let's not rub it in. All right. The the next one is El Pequeño. What? Is it Spanish? Yes. Mm, El Pequeño. <laughs> oh, oh El Pequeño. 
<laughs> What's the antonym of Spanish? Norwegian or something. Do you um, not know Spanish? Mm-mm. Okay. Well, this might not be a good one. El Pequeño. Okay, let me change it to English. The right. small. The small. El Pequeño. El Grande. Yeah. Oh, boom. Ben, ben did not ring in with his name, but I will still ben. give him a point. Ben. <laughs> one point, Ben. One point, Jerry. This is a best of five, by oh, the way. Best of five. Okay. The next one is Alive of Summer. Uh, Jerry, Dead of Winter. Oh, oh, that was oh. easy. That was easy. Okay, one point, Sold Jerry. that one. Now, of course, probably the seven-second delay also doesn't benefit Ben, but... That's right. We'll, That's we'll, my we'll, excuse. <laughs> so, two points, Jerry. The next one is... Now, this one's a stretch. I've taken liberties with antonyms. <laughs> gotcha. Stopping the newness. The newness? Like new-ist? New-ness. Not nudist. The newness Like stopping the nudist? Like stop or... Halt the nudist. Or you could say into the fresh, the young. Stopping the newest. <laughs> so something... <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to give a hint. No, this one no, is, no, we got this. Oh, Let's okay. think about it. We can stew over this. The antonym of stopping or I know, into. I know. I know. I don't have this. The newness. <laughs> out of the darkness type thing. Like out of the. Jerry. Jerry. Through the ages. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, yes. oh, oh my God. That's awful. That has no relation to through the ages whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, you just had to think. How does Gabby think about these things? And then do the opposite. <laughs> it just took me a second. But I... Oh. Wow. Oh. I really didn't think you would get that. That's okay. That's Ben's favorite That was game. for Ben. You know why I know Yeah. That? Because I'll that's listen to his awful. podcast. That's awful. That's about the that? worst clue I've ever heard in my life. Well, it's hard. When you look up antonym of ages, <laughs> there's not a whole lot that comes <laughs> up. <laughs> the new, new, newest. Okay, so I think technically that is Jerry 3, but here, here's a softball. Let's ball. carry on. Let's carry on. I'll here's a softball. Ball. Toe queen. Mike Delizio. I'm sorry. <laughs> toe queen? Um, oh, I've got toe queen. Head, hand, hand king? Skull King! Ben! Skull oh! King! <laughs> For God's sake! Yes! This yes! This game is much further. This is a lot, lot funner than it was with Richard Simpson. Ben's back on the like board! Alright, let's make so, it best of seven. Come on now, let's have a competition here. One. Are we men okay. or are we men? Okay. Maybe you're familiar with... Go away! From... Ben! Yes. Welcome to... Yeah! Oh! <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's three all. Oh. Screw you, Jerry. Oh. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. I see, now I got to pick a really good you one. You got to pick a good one. A hard, okay. A hard so one. this is a... Okay, I'm no hints because I just hope you both know this game. Okay. And I have it written down as like last resort. So this is deep. Multiple day stabilization. <laughs> Multiple day Stabilizations. <laughs> oh my God! Hang on a second. Multiple day stabilization. What would be the exact opposite of multiple day stabilization? Multiple day. Yes. Single. Multiple. I'm gonna, I'm well, gonna, well, well, I'm gonna cry wait. when I find this out. I'm terrible at these things. Day stabilization. I wasn't going to give any hints. No, no, don't give any hints. Don't give any hints. Multiple day stabilization. It's not really a hint. I'm just gonna say it wasn't a huge game. That it was big right when it came out. Then, like my, most games, that fell off the map. Multiple day stabilization. So it was a huge game. I'll have to edit out all the silences. And it's a huge game that came out and then went away. Because you're not thinking of it, probably. We're really... There's a lot, there's, this I is, mean, we can pass. No, 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 no. I don't think we want to pass. Thing is, thing is, what's the antonym of day? Multiple day, though. 
multiple. So are we looking for the alt- antonym of multiple? That's what we're looking for. Antonym of multiple. Day. Antonym of day. Thought that was easy. Antonym oh, of- one night. Ben. Yes. Oh, stabilization. What the f- fudge is that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I, I, stabilization. I don't know. This is good. This is this is a this is a. You one are, night. You are there. You're one word away from victory. Stabilization. Jerry, are you googling? I am. No, I'm not googling. I'm not googling. Um. One night earthquake. One night. I werewolf haven't. it's well one night werewolf's the only one i know but that's clearly not what oh. it is it's not one night werewolf it's the one that i own it's one night jerry one night revolution yes that's cheap one night because that, that was that was that was hey well think of it this way we came to the answer together yes okay so so it's that, 3.5 so to 3.5 it's, it's, tied. it's tied it's tied okay Give so us one here more. we this go this is for the winner this is for the winner here we go, Ben. This one, this one's for you as well. And again, liberties are taken because sometimes it's hard to find antonyms. Ancient gaucheness or Go- crudeness. Crudeness. Ancient gaucheness. Ben. Ben. Modern art. Yeah. <laughs> I, try looking up the definition of antonym of art because art covers up so many things. I can't believe I have I lost to Richard Simpson. And now I've lost to Ben. This is not my game. Modern art, ancient. Ghost. You see the way games? you the way you win is by changing the rules halfway through the game. <laughs> that is how you achieve victory. Oh. Multiple day stabilization was my favorite. though. that was pretty good. Very that good. Took me a long Very day. good. That was a good one. Multiple day. Well, that's all I've got for the show. I think this was rather entertaining. I think this will please all those in the trailer parks as well as all the Euro trash over. And what do y'all live in over there? Apartments? Castles. Castles. <laughs> Castles. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but before we go, before we go, I just want to say that there is, you know, people in our government that are working to save our children and they, they are using Donald Trump as the crusader who will save us all and don't let the deep state get to you and the arrests will come the supreme court will save us and if the supreme court don't save us the army will be rolled out and so don't worry (laughs) have faith everything will be okay i don't know what's happening right now (laughs) you don't know QAnon. you have not been woke Okay, not, I'm so understand. sorry. Me and Ben need so to do sorry. a podcast where we just we just interpret okay, our I'm own sure. QAnon. Sure, do a side a sidecast. Yep. So Ben, um, I assume everyone can find you at Five Games for Doomsday dot org. That's it. Dot edu. Dot edu. Dot, edu. <laughs> dot gov. Dot gov. <laughs> <laughs> dot dot sad. Yeah, Five Games for Doomsday <laughs> dot sad. Dot. I'm all alone. <laughs> dot hug me. <laughs> Oh, dot depression. Dot, yes. dot impotence is real. <laughs> oh. Just go to dailystormer.com slash Ben <laughs> Slash Richard Simpson. Slash Richard Simpson. <laughs> and you'll find, uh, click on the link, <laughs> put in your PayPal, and you'll have access to all the, the fine uh, content there at Five games. Well, we've done a we've done a great right. job, Bear. Thank you. I mean, the thing is, Richard just thought Breitbart was too left and liberal for us. So. <laughs> he just got mad, so he shut that down. <laughs> so Ben Maddox, uh, Five Games for Doomsday podcast. Right. Five Games for Doomsday, and that's uh, that's the number five, correct? Yes, and the number no, four. it's the it's the words. Oh, it's the words. Does either if you, one if you go into the up? if you go into the website, it's five games for doomsday dot com. The words. Oh. Slash but the if words. You, <laughs> if you're throwing exactly. hand signals, it's this. Gotcha. And if you go to Twitter, it's five games for Doomsday. The numbers. Gotcha. Well, Ben, thank you for being on the show. Mm. I want to have to conclude. Jerry's nearly asleep on the floor. I'm good. And it's I, only three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm, I, <laughs> one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. I mean, I mean, they say they say unemployment is a bad thing, but you guys are really rocking it. So. I'm doing the best I can with what I have. Well, thanks for being on the show. We appreciate it very much. Yes, it's been a pleasure. And I'm, I, you know, send our hate sorry. mail. Sorry, sorry. What was your, that, Jerry? What's your, what's your what's your email again? Says so people want to send you hate mail. 
That's five games for doomsday at gmail.com. Also, I have a second one, which is Trump is savior <laughs> at q.com. Okay. okay. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this show. I'm Gabby. This is Jerry. And, and that was Ben. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. 